Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This video is part of a series that I've been putting together about hair's greatest photographic hits. If you notice, if you scroll through Instagram, the most common hair photos you see from barbers and hairstylists is essentially, I, I took a photo of a haircut I did in a salon. But if you look at like the big repost pages, if you look at the um, company pages, if you look at the people who win sort of hair awards, and if you look at the, the big influencers, the hair influencers, you'll find that they all tend to have the same sort of styles of photos. And some of them, well, I guess we could call the vintage gentleman, which is what this video is about. And t typically what characterizes this look is kind of a vibe that looks like something somewhere between like a king from the 15th century, like in an oil painting or a civil war soldier, just a portrait that looks very old fashioned. And we tend to see this a lot with like kind of barber shops that do like the big beards and the pompadours and that sort of thing. They're like, hey, retro haircut, let's do a retro style portrait. And this look typically has a lot of darkness around it, but also very bright areas as well. There's a, it, like, I wouldn't quite call it like a low key portrait, which is where everything's very dark in the background and there's just very little detail. It's kind of a mix of both, but they definitely hide certain things in shadows and emphasize th certain things with highlights. And it's, it's a very specific look where when you see it, you're like, oh, that's that kind of old school barbershop look if they have a professional photographer working there. So in this video, I'd like to teach you how to recreate this look using just a phone and a ring light and maybe a couple extra things. But I also want to tweak the style a little bit to make it really conducive to haircut photos, to really show off your haircut. Now to do this look, one of the first things we're gonna need is some kind of a textured background, whether it's some weathered old wood or some bricks. Like in my salon, I have actual bricks, but in my studio here, I have fake bricks on a, on a backdrop. Just something that has some kind of pattern or texture. You get a million extra points if it's weathered and old looking. You know, if you have like a tattered old vintage flag from your country, that could be a cool backdrop. You just need something that's not a plain white wall or a plain black wall. Now granted, a plain wall will absolutely work for this look, but you get bonus points if you have some kind of texture in the backdrop. If you were to check on Amazon or on various photography websites, you can find these kind of hand painted, like spongy, grungy backdrops that can also kind of give you this look. This very, it's just like a texture, it's a mood thing. Now, once you have this backdrop, and in my little example here, I drew some wood really quick. Now, I, I don't know how to draw wood. I just tried to figure it out real quick. So this is our weathered wood. What you're gonna wanna do is get some kind of light. Now, I use these YN360 lights. I have a video all about these lights if you look for the best light for barbers and hairstylists, or I'll leave a link in the description. What I'm gonna do is take this YN360 light, I'm gonna crank it as high as it goes, and I'm gonna point it at the backdrop. Now, where I wanna put it is, I don't know, one to three feet away from the wall, kind of angled in at the wall. And what I'm aiming for is to get a splash of light that's a little bit off center from my backdrop. So if this line here is the center, what I'm looking for is the edge of the light to kind of hit that center. And so we'll say everything inside of this circle is well exposed and everything outside of it is increasingly darker. So we'll probably have like darker, darker, and continually darker as we work outward until everything out here is just black, right? So right in the middle of this splash of, of light here, it's gonna be well exposed we want the edge of it to be about in the center of what we plan to use as our backdrop. Now, whether it's left or right, I'll, I'll get into that later, but at this point, we just need to know that we want a splash of light just off center in the backdrop. You can move your light around and fiddle with it and figure out exactly where to put it and how to put it to get this best result, but you want that fall off, that, that gradual light to dark to be somewhat abrupt, and you want it to be in the center of your backdrop. Now, once we have that, we're gonna take our model and we're gonna place them a few feet in front of that light. And when you do this, the goal is you want them far enough away from the light that the light itself or the light bouncing off of the backdrop will not hit them. You want this light to be completely independent from the model. You don't want it, you don't want it touching them at all. So once you get them positioned, you wanna have them stand in a way to where an interesting part of their haircut as far as the silhouette goes, just the silhouette, we're not talking internal, just external details right now, the outside edges of the haircut, we want those interesting silhouettes to be hitting just in the center of that bright area. So I would put him roughly about here. So let's just say this guy happens to have a big pompadour. 
and maybe it comes out there. So if we've got a, a great big interesting shaped pompadour here, we want to make sure that this, the interesting part of the silhouette is right in the center of that bright spot. And then the rest of the haircut would be surrounded by darkness. Oh, side note, should have mentioned this earlier. Because the lights we're dealing with in this video, the ring light and the YM360, because they're not the brightest lights in the world and they're not studio flashes, you probably will have to kill the lights in your salon or barbershop to take this shot. You'll probably be able to position the lights and get them set up while you have the house lights on, but once you go to take the shot, you'll probably want to kill those house lights. I'll get more into it in just a minute here after we get the model position and the lights position, but it just came to mind when I mentioned darkness here, but I didn't yet say to turn off the lights. So once you have your model roughly positioned, now you're gonna to wanna to set up your key light, which is gonna be our ring light. Now, in this room, it's very small. I've got 10 feet this way and 15 feet this way. It's not very big and all the walls are white. And so what I found trying to test this shot yesterday is the ring light will put out light like this, just wide. It just goes everywhere. Like this is the, like if I'm the ring light here, it's just blasting like that. And what was happening is every time I turned on the ring light, it would bounce off of the ceiling, it would bounce off all the walls around. And so I would try to light my subject with it, but all the extra light bouncing off of everything else bounced back into the subject and filled the shadows. And so I wasn't getting dark shadows. So what I ended up doing, trying to keep this as low budget as possible, is I took a cardboard box. Now if you notice, I'm using a white box. This is very important. If I use a brown box for this, it's gonna throw brown light on my subject. So I took a white box, I rolled it up, and I taped it to the outside of my ring light. This is gonna act as what we call barn doors or maybe a snoot, kind of a big fat round snoot. And what this does is it focuses the light so that rather than coming out like this, it's coming out like that. Like it's only gonna come straight out of the ring light. And you'll see as I put this thing on here, all of the extra light going into the corners of the room and bouncing out everywhere is diminished. And so by killing off all that extra light, I'm able to have dark shadows. So where you wanna put this ring light now is on the opposite side of your model. If this is the bright side on the backdrop, you want the light to be hitting the opposite side of them so that essentially where that light falls off is gonna be just around the edge of their silhouette here, maybe a little bit under the chin. You'll probably get a splash of shadow in front of the ear. So all of this will be dark. Now what this does is really fun for me, really interesting. On this edge of the photo, we're gonna see a dark black silhouette falling into shadow, highlighted and emphasized by a bright background with some interesting texture. On the opposite side here, we're gonna see a dark black background or almost black. It's, it doesn't have to fall all the way to black, but you want it to be considerably darker than this opposite side. You want that fall off to be happening throughout this frame but we're gonna see darkness back here, and it's, that's gonna be juxtaposed by a very well exposed internal structure of the haircut here. So, you know, if we could see comb lines going this way, we will see these details, and then maybe like a low taper here. So in this style of photo, if we position things just right, we can have a very strong, bold silhouette from our haircut, but at the same time, we can have a lot of internal detail on the opposite side, both being emphasized and really popping out because the dark side is against a bright background and the bright side is against a dark background. And so you have like a high key and low key photo at the same time. Now this is a little bit tricky to do. You're gonna have to be careful as you're shooting and move your camera slowly and pay a lot of attention to what you're framing up and make sure that you have everything positioned to do that. It's not gonna happen maybe on your first shot, on your first try doing this, but when you get the hang of it, it kind of happens automatically. You start framing it up this way and looking for very specific details and keys. And you'll start thinking about this even during the haircut, like, oh, this part of the silhouette's gonna be so good, I'm, I'm gonna have that on the dark side. So whether you put the bright light over here or over here, it all depends on which part of the silhouette of the haircut you wanna show off. And then wherever you put the bright light on the backdrop, you wanna put the, the light on the key light on the opposite side. Here's some more really big important tips to make this work. When you go to take this photo with your phone, it doesn't wanna lose any detail. It doesn't want anything to fall black. And so it's going to try to expose the photo in a way 
that it saves as much detail in the shadows as possible. But as it does that, it's gonna make the whole image brighter, which means a lot of these highlighted areas are actually going to blow out, which means they're gonna become so bright that you're not gonna see detail there. And so as a whole, the image will show more detail, but you're gonna lose detail here and back here. And essentially the, the camera likes to automatically overexpose the image. You're going to want to manually override that with your phone and underexpose the image. So the only way I knew to do this was to long press on the thing I was taking a picture of, and then it would give me this like auto exposure lock um, box, and I could slide a little sun dial slider thing down. And as I did that, the image became darker. And what that'll do is it'll darken up what the camera wants to shoot enough that my shadows can be shadows and enough that my brightest parts of my, my haircut aren't gonna be blown out. This is hugely, hugely, hugely important. You cannot skip that part. And another big tip is to stand away from the client, the model, as far as you possibly can. With a phone, you can probably get five to seven feet away before you're zoomed in so much that you start to degrade the quality. But this is one of the benefits you'll get from a fancy camera is your lens itself will do the zoom. Like this lens right here is a 135 millimeter lens. At 135 millimeters, this kind of shot looks absolutely magical. So what you'll find is the closer you're standing to your model and the wider you're shooting them, the more down to earth and regular Joe they're going to look. But if you can stand further back and zoom further in, and if you have a really steady hand, go to like 5X, 6X on your phone camera, the further back you stand and, and zoom in, the more kind of regal and otherworldly and, and, and above everyone else they tend to look. When you see these types of photos, there's just an aesthetic to them that, that puts somebody on a different plane, on a different level. They're very unapproachable. It makes them look like regal. Um, and they, they look, everybody looks like a statue of themselves if you're able to stand far enough back and, sh and zoom in enough to shoot them. And again, this is a limitation of a phone that uh, the iPhone 13 has gotten better than the 12 at this, but it's still not as good as a real camera. And that's one of the biggest benefits you'll get from getting like a real camera is you'll be able to stand 15 feet away from your model and not, not lose any image quality to do so. You will find with a phone, the further back you stand and zoom in, the more degraded the image will become. But that's a huge key to this look. If you're shooting it with a 50 millimeter lens and you're like, why doesn't it have that like that cool, epic, big look? it's because your lens isn't wide enough and you're standing too close. You gotta get far back and you gotta zoom way in. Another benefit you'll get if you may be considering, you know, if you're a phone shooter and you're thinking, maybe I should get a fancy camera, how would it benefit this situation? So the first thing is, again, that focal length. You can get a lens that is dedicated to creating this kind of like epic statuesque look. The other thing is you can use flash. So in order for me to use this ring light, I had to kill the lights in this room. And what you'll find using the ring light is, or, or any lights, what you'll find about lighting is the brighter I turn that ring light, the darker the shadows become. Because what happens is everything the light is hitting will become brighter. And then the camera will adjust to those brighter areas by making the entire image darker. And as it does that, the shadows become darker. So the brighter your actual lights are that you're setting up, the darker the rest of the light in the world around it will become in camera. Now, if you're using flash, whether you're using speed lights or studio strobes, to do something like this, you don't even have to turn off the lights in the salon and you can make it look pitch black outside of those flashes. In fact, this photo on the screen here, I shot outside on a bright day. It was like August and it was a million degrees out, but we were just standing in the shade. And by using a flash and shooting at like F11 ISO 100, with the flashes just cranked all the way up, I was able to make outside on a bright summer day look dark and moody. So that's another huge benefit you'll get from using a fancy camera to get these kinds of shots. And one last final tip here as I'm wrapping up on this. When you go to edit these photos, and that's gonna be like, that's such a big whole crazy can of worms. One of the key things that makes this look kind of look like this look is you'll wanna take your highlight slider. I'm talking Adobe Lightroom here if you've ever used it. Pull your highlights all the way down. That'll show you a ton of texture and detail in the skin and then take your shadow slider and pull that almost all the way up and that'll show you a ton of texture and detail in the hair. If you do those two things and then you know work through the rest of your editing to make everything to your liking, you will get that like, like Civil War era, large format accordion camera kind of vibe feeling out of your photo. You will see like every pore and every wrinkle and every hair. 
and it really uh, helps to emphasize this style of photo. So if you got anything out of this, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share it with somebody in your salon or barbershop who takes horrible photos. And if you're curious about other photo styles, I'm gonna be going through a lot more. I've already done a few. I'm going to be doing more, including the dreamy natural, the um, you know wavy big hair in front of the salon. We're gonna do this, we, we did the studio look in another video. And if you have any photos that, any photos that you find online and you go, I wanna to learn to recreate that with a phone and a ring light, DM me, tell me about it, and you know, hopefully I could do a video on that kind of photo as well. Thank you.